Could you land on Jupiter soon? When you think about space exploration, you probably imagine a high-tech spacecraft landing on the surface of a distant planet. While this may be possible for a number of planets, it's simply not the case for Jupiter, and you're about to find out why. Just don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to join us on the Bright Side of Life. We've already sent spacecraft to Mars, Saturn's largest moon Titan, and of course our own moon. And thanks to these landings, we've learned a lot about these places, and we hope to do the same with others. Unfortunately, it's a little more complicated when it comes to studying the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. If you decide to land on Jupiter, the first problem you'd encounter is the gigantic planet's composition, which is mostly made up of helium and hydrogen. The atmosphere also has small fractions of ammonia, methane, sulfur, and water vapor. Due to the pressure and temperature differences, the gases that make up Jupiter's atmosphere separate into layers. This is what creates those red and white bands that we can clearly see from Earth. It's a remarkable sight to behold, but it doesn't make your task any easier. Trying to land on Jupiter would basically be like landing on a cloud. So, does this mean you'll just go right through the planet from one side to the other? Not at all. First and foremost, without any oxygen in the atmosphere, you'll need to bring along huge supplies of this gas just to be able to breathe. Secondly, as you'll be nearing the planet, you'll take the full brunt of the incredible temperatures at the top of Jupiter's atmosphere. They can reach a whopping 1160 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll also be approaching the planet under the pull of its incredible gravitation, so your speed will get as high as 110,000 miles per hour in no time. To survive such extreme conditions is a challenging task. Just take it from the Galileo probe, which reached Jupiter's atmosphere back in 1995. It survived scorching temperatures as it started its descent. It kept moving even when the temperature suddenly dropped down to 307 degrees Fahrenheit and the pressure as well as the wind speed increased. But 78 minutes into its exploration, things went downhill when overwhelming pressure finished the probe off for good. So, about 75 miles into the atmosphere, you'll approach the limit of human exploration on Jupiter. This is where the 4,900-pound Galileo probe was literally crushed by the atmospheric pressure, which is at this point over 100 times stronger than it is on the surface of our planet. But let's imagine your spacecraft has been constructed with the help of some state-of-the-art technologies and can withstand what Galileo couldn't you'll continue your descent into a much denser layer of the atmosphere. You'll feel an impressive impact, but even this won't be enough to stop your super high-tech shuttle. Three minutes after you reach the dense atmosphere, you'll start to feel the enormous force of Jupiter's rotation. Jupiter rotates much faster than any other planet in our solar system, which means one whole day on this planet is only about nine and a half Earth hours. Because of this, violent winds whip around Jupiter at a speed of over 300 miles per hour. This rapid spinning also makes electrical currents in the metallic hydrogen generate electricity, making the magnetic field of the planet even more powerful. As soon as you descend 430 miles lower, the air pressure will get 1150 times stronger than it is on Earth. There's only been one man-made craft that could withstand such pressure, and it was the Trieste bathscape. It reached an incredible depth of 35,797 feet while descending to the deepest point of the Earth's ocean, the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. That's why, if you go deeper than the Galileo probe managed to reach, you'll uncover Jupiter's greatest mysteries. It's a shame you won't be able to share your findings with others. This deep into Jupiter's atmosphere, all radio waves get absorbed. You'll be absolutely shut off and unable to communicate with the outside world. You also won't be able to see anything because of the horrendously low visibility outside, so you'll have to trust your instruments to explore the world around you. Now, you'll have already passed 2,500 miles, and the temperature will have reached 6,100 degrees Fahrenheit. If the temperature gets just a tiny bit higher, it'd be enough to melt even tungsten, which has the highest melting point of any metal known to humankind, and that's a whopping 6,192 degrees Fahrenheit. Even after descending for about 12 hours, you won't even be halfway through the planet. Roughly 13,000 miles down, the pressure is almost 2 million times stronger than the surface of our planet. As for the temperature, it's getting hotter than the surface of the sun. 
These extreme conditions cause the hydrogen around you to change from a gas to a liquid-like substance. Molecules get pressed so close to each other that their electrons separate and form what is known as metallic hydrogen. If you move even deeper, you'll experience the metallic hydrogen's buoyancy force. It'll stubbornly counteract the downward pull of the planet's gravity. As a result, your spacecraft will turn into a big yo-yo. The buoyancy of metallic hydrogen will shoot you up, and then gravity will pull you down again. These two forces will eventually equalize, which is bad news for you. Unable neither to leave the planet nor move further down, you'll be forever suspended in mid-Jupiter with no way to escape. But what if you manage to defy the laws of physics and have a peep at the core of the giant planet? Then, according to what scientists presume, you'll have to withstand temperatures the human brain can't even fathom. 43,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we speak about the pressure at the center of Jupiter, it can't be compared with anywhere on Earth. See for yourself. If you descended to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, you'd experience pressure equal to 16,000 pounds bearing down on each square inch of your body. This is the same as the weight of four cars. But at the center of Jupiter, 650 million pounds would press on each square inch of your body. And that's no less than the pressure from 160,000 cars stacked on top of you. Scientists still aren't completely sure if the very core of the planet is a solid rock that's bigger than Earth itself or a thick, scorching soup of molten substances. We'll probably know the answers one day, once Juno has fulfilled its mission. Juno is a spacecraft that was created with the sole purpose of collecting as much information about Jupiter as possible. It started its journey on August 5, 2011, and has been orbiting Jupiter since July 5, 2016. The spacecraft is currently rotating around the poles of the giant planet. It goes far away from Jupiter and then comes as near as 3,100 miles above the clouds. When Juno gets closer to the planet, its task is to find out whether or not Jupiter has a solid core. The craft also maps the forceful magnetic fields of the gaseous planet and the amounts of ammonia and water deep down in the atmosphere. As a bonus, it also gets the opportunity to enjoy Jupiter's stunning auroras. What does Jupiter really hide beneath its layers and layers of atmosphere? A solid planetary core or a bowl of hot space soup? Pass the crackers. Write your theories in the comments below. Remember to hit the like button, share this video with your friends, and join us on the Bright Side of Life!